Hey, what's going on guys? This is Youth Man. In this video, I'll be sharing with you my final thoughts on the Monolith THX series from Monoprice. Now, if you're new to the channel and are into home theater, audio and video, be sure to subscribe because I produce weekly content that I'm sure you'll enjoy. Now, before I share my thoughts on the Monolith THX series, I wanna kinda of go back a little bit of my history with Monoprice. Now, I've been using Monoprice in my theater for probably about the past 13 years. Now, mostly I've always purchased their home theater cables and interconnects, speaker wire, and so forth. Monoprice has always provided just an incredible value in that area, and I really have enjoyed the product as well as the quality that I get from their cables. So when Monoprice announced a few years ago that they were going to be offering amplifiers and speakers and subwoofers, Honestly, I just had no desire to review them. I just assumed that they were just going to be cheap, generic, just really budget friendly, um, and just wasn't gonna sound that great. And so I didn't have any desire really to review it here on the channel. But many of you guys had requested that I review the monolith and also began to see other content creators and reviewers that really spoke highly of them. And so I figured, you know what, let me give them a shot. So I reached out to monolith and I asked them if they would send me some of their products. Now over the past six months, I've actually reviewed quite a few of their home theater products. The Monolith 15 inch ported sub was a really powerful sub with low extension and very impressive and clean output. The 93 pound Monolith 11X amplifier is an absolute beast of an amp. I really, really like this amp. It's extremely well built with 200 by three and 100 by eight channels of amplification. Now that's enough clean power to sufficiently drive just about any 11 channel home theater that you've got. Now, not only is it a quality amp, it's also heavy enough to get a good workout moving it around your room. Now I've been using the 11X amplifier in my home theater for about the past five months and it has performed flawlessly. It has powered my 7.2.4 clip speaker system to some pretty extreme levels. Needless to say, I was so impressed with the 15 inch subwoofer and the 11X amplifier and so I figured, let's go ahead and review some more products from Monoprice. Monoprice then sent me a massive 487 pound pallet which included five speakers from their THX series, a 12 inch sealed sub, and the absolutely ridiculous 215 pound M215 subwoofer, which has dual 15 inch woofers being powered by a 2000 watt amplifier. Now, of course, the first thing in that palette I wanted to hear was the M215 subwoofer. Now, it looks really intimidating, but its appearance matched very well with its performance. The M215 subwoofer brought Godzilla to life in my home theater. Chest pounding bass, deep extension, and plenty of headroom for even the most intense John Wick 3 scene. Now I did some comparison videos on the M215 against my SVS PB16. So if you're interested in seeing how that performed, I'll post a link to it up here in the card as well as down in the description below. Now I've had the Monolith THX system here in my home theater for the past several months and I can absolutely say that I'm really impressed with this somewhat smallish bookshelf speaker system. So I wanna just kinda of go over some of the pros and the cons that I found with this system. Now let's first talk about the appearance. When you look at the Monolith THX series, really it's kind of a no frills, kind of plain Jane appearance. It's just all black. Um, about the only cool thing about it as far as style wise is the rounded edges. That's something that you don't see on a lot of speakers. Now having the rounded cabinets is more than just style, it also serves as function as it tends to reduce the amount of resonance inside the cabinet. Now each speaker is equipped with magnetic grills, which is a really nice feature. It just provides a really clean look and style if you like to leave the grills on. Now I like the finish on these. If you look real close, it almost has like these little grooves on it, but you do need to be careful because you could scratch the finish because of these ridges. Now one other thing I noticed with the speakers themselves is the dust caps are really, really thin and they're easy to push in. Don't ask me how I know that. 
So what about the performance? For movies, these sounded really great. I'm not normally very impressed with a bookshelf type system, but this setup is really, really nice. I found that I could crank it to pretty loud volumes and it was crystal clear, had great dialogue from the center channel and just provided just an overall exciting experience when watching movies. Now I've already sent back the M215 so I only had their smaller 12 inch subwoofer to set up with this system. And honestly for movies I'm not a super big fan of a sealed subwoofer especially when it's only a 12 inch. My room is 13 foot wide by 19 foot deep and 10 foot ceilings so to me that's about a medium sized room and a single sealed subwoofer really just doesn't do it for me personally. Now the bass that was produced from the 12 inch sealed subwoofer was really good. It was really clean, it was really tight and punchy. It just didn't have a lot of tactile feel. Even when I was watching movies like Godzilla where you've got this, this big stomp, you know when Godzilla's walking at the very beginning and the whole place is supposed to be shaking, you really didn't get that kind of presence and that feeling, that tactile feeling with the sealed sub. So what my recommendation, if you're going to use this setup in a home theater environment, I would definitely either get two of these subwoofers or maybe spend like the extra 50 bucks. Right now, as of the time of this video, Monoprice has the ported version of that 12 inch for about 50 bucks more. It's an open box, but man, that would be well worth the money to buy the ported as it'll typically give you more output and better extension. Now for home theater, I really prefer 15 inch drivers at least. Um, 15 inch drivers just give you a lot, a lot of power. It really adds to the impact of the movie and it moves more air and thus pressurizes your room more. And so Monoprice does have a 15 inch version, a ported version, which I actually reviewed on the channel. That is an incredible, incredible subwoofer. It's quite a bit more expensive. I think it's about $1,400 but it's a monster for a single inch 15. They also have a single 15 inch sealed if you like sealed subwoofers. Now the last thing I wanna mention in regards to movies is the built-in Dolby Atmos speakers. Each one of the mini towers as well as the surrounds are equipped with a Dolby Atmos built-in speaker on the top of each speaker. Now these are designed to reflect sound off of your ceiling and then down to your listening position. This is beneficial if you don't have the desire to climb in your attic to install uh, in-ceiling speakers or maybe you don't want to mount on your wall height speakers. These are an alternative to that. Now with convenience typically comes sacrifice and I can tell you from having in-ceiling speakers these really don't compare to that. Matter of fact, I had two of my friends over and we were doing some demos um, using Gravity. Gravity has some amazing uh, Dolby Atmos um, soundtrack in it and it's just a phenomenal Atmos demo. And each one of us after that demo, I would look at them and I would ask them, you know, what did you hear? How was that experience? And a couple of them mentioned that, you know, the sound kind of went up, but it really didn't hit the ceiling and reflect back. And each one of us agreed that we kind of heard the sound more coming from the speaker than we did off the ceiling. And so it really didn't get that immersive Atmos sound that I'm used to. Now to me, the Atmos aspect of these speakers is probably the least favorite of the setup. But even if you don't hook up the Atmos speakers and just use the front firing, you know, the four drivers in the mini towers and the center channel, Man, it's a phenomenal sound. It's a great, great sound, especially at this price point. Now for music, this is really where it got interesting. I really didn't expect it to sound really good for music, but I was very impressed with the sound quality of these speakers. Now I would listen to it in just two channel as well as the 12 inch sub, and it was just nice and tight and clean. Sounded really, really good. Vocals on the mini tower with that soft on tweeter was definitely not overly bright, but it still had good quality detail in the highs as well as just a sweet sound in the mid range. Now, because each of the front mini towers has dual woofers, it had a lot of good mid bass punch to it, 
for those front speakers. And so I really was impressed with the sound that was produced from these mini towers. Now with both music and movies, I did find with a single sub, now you'll get this pretty much in just about any room, if you move from seat to seat, you're gonna get a variance of how much bass and the quality of bass that is produced in that location. And so I always recommend to have more than one subwoofer in your setup, unless you only have just one seat. If you've got a couch, if you've got a love seat, if you've got theater seats like I've got, and you've got multiple people watching a movie or listening to music, having only one subwoofer, you're gonna be limited to the bass response throughout your room. And so, uh, we found that this spot right here, my left seat, had a good solid amount of bass. And then when you sit here, it was kind of like in a null. And then over here, you had a decent amount of bass. So my recommendation is always to go with multiple subwoofers. And I've even got a video on why I believe that you need multiple subwoofers in your setup. And so if you're interested in that video, check out this video right up here in the card above, as well as in the description below. Now, one thing that I really was impressed at with music and two channel listening was the imaging on these and the sound stage. It just had a really, really wide sound stage, but the imaging was really sweet. And what I mean by that is there were several times during the music, I would just close my eyes and listen. And I'm like, oh man, I left all the speakers on. I could still hear the center channel. And so I got up to physically listen to the center channel to make sure it was on and it was actually turned off. I was only listening in two channel, but I was hearing in my brain this really wide sound stage and it just sounded like the imaging, the artist that was singing the song was right there in front of me, even though I was only listening to two speakers. And so I really liked that about these speakers. So now let's talk about price. I believe this is a kick butt system for its price point. I mean, at the time of this video, the mini towers are running 450 each. Center channel, I believe is at 350. Each surround speaker is 350. So you're looking at right under $2,000 for not only five speakers, but th technically that's a five and four Atmos speakers. So you're getting nine speakers for under $2,000. Then you add in the subwoofer. The subwoofer at the time of this video is about $750. Um, again, depending on if you want to go with duals or if you want to go to the, the ported version of this or even the bigger 15 inch, that's going to vary on how much you put into this system. But just with this system and the 12 inch subwoofer, you're looking at under $3,000 for a complete 5.1.4 Dolby Atmos speaker system. I think that is an incredible value for what you get and the sound quality that's produced with this system. So if you're looking for a setup that fits within that budget, definitely give Monolith a consideration. I think they produce an incredible value for both home theater and they perform very well for music. If you wanted to upgrade to better Atmos, you could always add in ceilings and just not plug in the Dolby Atmos that are built into these. Also, I've been advised by Monolith that they'll be producing pretty soon, they'll be coming out with a floor standing model of these without the Dolby Atmos. So be sure to check out their website for those when those come out. Well, hopefully this video has been helpful. Hope you guys have an incredible week. God bless, and we'll catch you in the next video.